love you too, Stank. I hope you enjoyed our uh, little time by there. <laughs> I'm Strom Carlson, and this is Black Ratchet. And welcome to Be Your Own Telephone Company with Asterisk. Uh, apparently, Alex thought that created this a uh, bullshit presentation. So. We're quite proud of that fact. Yes, we're very proud of that fact. Is Alex already here? No, he is. I thought that was just people waiting for him. See, if Alex thought that were actually here, we'd give him the payphone. But I guess he's not. So, you lose, Alex. Sorry. So, let's get started. Actually, before we get started, I just want to test the uh, phone to make sure that our dial tone is the right volume. So let's get started. As soon as I get these cords in the right places. So, first off, what is asterisk? What is this damn thing? How many of you have no clue what asterisk actually is? Sweet. You're in for fun. For lots of fun. What is asterisk? Asterisk is a free open source PBX that runs on Linux. It is the best thing since sliced bread. How many of you don't know what a PBX is? phone trick friends in the front. <laughs> PBX is a private branch exchange. It's a telephone system, in case you hadn't guessed this talk is about telephones. It was originally written by Mark Spencer of Digium back in 1999. It's been upgraded significantly since then. It's uh, now at version 1.0.8 is the stable one, right, Ratchet? 1.0.9 is the stable one now? Yeah, okay. Wow, okay. What? Yeah, we, we, we just run the latest uh, bleeding edge version. So, why asterisk? Well, first off, it's free! And that's the cool part. I mean, a typical PBX uh, for a business will cost you in the five-digit range, just for the hardware. And for the setup, it'll cost you even more. So, if you can do this yourself, and this is very easy to do yourself, it'll save you a lot of money if you're running a company. And if you're a hobbyist, it's really cool, because you can set up your own phone network and call each other for free, and we'll get into that. It runs on commodity PC hardware. In fact, this little tiny laptop that, at, that uh, Ratchet is, is typing on right now is our asterisk PBX for the presentation. It, there's broad support for VoIP protocols and hardware. It's easy to get interconnect with other asterisk boxes. You can form your own network. It's configurable to do almost whatever you want it to do. So you can tweak it to your needs. You can write your own code to interface with things if you need to. Uh, unfortunately, it won't do your dishes, but um, it comes close. Yet, we're working on the dish dial tone module. I beg your pardon? 2.0, yes, or 2.0. So let's get into the hardware of Asterisk. Asterisk will run on surprisingly out of date stuff. If you go to voipinfo.org, there's a wiki there with all sorts of information on VoIP and especially Asterisk. And one of the pages is this page where people post what they've gotten Asterisk to do. They stress test Asterisk on various hardware. Someone running a 133 megahertz Pentium 1 with 16 megs of RAM got three concurrent SIP calls going at the same time. And any PC you have lying around will work. Uh, someone posted that they got a 2.4 gigahertz P4 with 512 megs of RAM to do 790 simultaneous calls. So you'll hit your bandwidth limit far, quick, more, far more quickly than you'll uh, hit the limit of your hardware. You can do, you know, this here's a simple sample asterisk installation. This is actually my rack behind my desk at home. So there's my asterisk box uh, in the corner. Thanks, thanks. I get told that a lot. And I beg your pardon? 
Yeah, I did get the rack at Costco, actually. <laughs> so there's the Astros box chilling next to my mail server, my web server, my NAS box, and everything. Um, there are Sun Machines here. Asterisk is running on the PC, but people have gotten it to work on Sun Machines running Linux, and I think someone got it to run on Solaris running on, Linux, on Sun hardware as well. So, yes. They all work. We'll have a Q&A session at the end, so, um, so we'll, we'll do that. There are, you can, there are many methods for uh, to, you know, connecting your telephones to Asterisk. You can get either an IP telephone or you can connect um, regular analog telephones to Asterisk. There are IP telephones you can buy uh, secondhand on the market. They're not all that expensive. This is the Cisco 7960. This is an IP phone. Um, you can get those for about 250 bucks online. In fact, I looked on eBay. I think I saw them going used for 150 bucks now. There's a if you look for deals, I've gotten one for 120. That's as low as they go right now in current market conditions. <laughs> There's the. Uh, go ahead. You don't want to know what I had to do for that. <laughs> There's the Polycom IP600, which is considered the other really good phone. These two are considered probably the premium VoIP telephones, and that's 250 bucks online on eBay. There are crappy telephones you can get. You can get the Grandstream Budget Home 100, used about 40 bucks. It's roughly equivalent to that $9.95 phone you buy at the drugstore that falls apart before you even get it home. But um, it's a VoIP phone, so if you need just a cheap VoIP phone, that'll work. And right in the mid-range, there's the SNOM 190 which is about 150, 175 bucks. The prices have come down since we threw these slides together. And I mean, there are hundreds of manufacturers making, making phones for asterisk and just VoIP in general. So you can look around and find all sorts of stuff. Not, most VoIP phones are built the same. Uh, we'll get into that actually in the protocol section. So um, I'm actually gonna ask you to hold your questions until the Q&A session at the end. And we'll have a queue at the telephone over there for you to ask your questions via telephone. You know the cool stuff coming later. You can also um, get little terminal adapters if you wanna plug your analog telephones in. You can get, buy one from Digium that speaks Asterisk's native protocol called EEX. And that's called the EEC. And I think I have one here. Somewhere. Oh, actually, it's in the, where did we put the blue box? swag later, so get your dialing fingers ready. This is the EC, little tidy thing. You plug in um, an analog telephone in one end, and you plug your ethernet connection in the other end, and your analog phone is now a VoIP phone. This is 100 bucks. You can also get the Sephora SPA2002, we've got those here, uh, running, and these are about 70 bucks. You can plug two Vanal Ratchet, or Vanna Ratchet. <laughs> There's, um, these speak SIP instead of EECS. You can plug two analog telephones into these, and you get two dial tones, and that's about 70 bucks. You can get uh, the Grand Stream uh, Handy Tone 286 for about 65 bucks. That only does one, I think, that speaks SIP. And the old Cisco ATA-186, which is the one that uh, Vonage used to uh, send out, is about 50 bucks online. You can also, there's tons more of these. There's one, the, the adapter that Packet 8 used to send out, the DTA-310, you can find those about 30 bucks used online, and although you can't really get them working as they are, you can reflash the firmware and it becomes just generic SIP adapters. There's details for that on my website. So. You can also buy something called a Zaptel card, and these are cards you put in your asterisk box, and you connect analog telephones and telephone lines to these cards. The one on the top is the TDM 400P. That has four little modules on it. You can select either FXS, which are dial tones, or FXO, which are telephone line interfaces, and put them on the card and arrange them any way you like. The bottom one is a T1 card, and you can, um, there are two versions of that. There's a 405 and 410P, and the 406, 411, the uh, 411, 406 are, um, have ec echo cancellation built into them. And so you can uh, bring you know, four primary, primary rate ISDN interfaces into that and have 20, you know, 96 channels of uh, voice going out of your asterisk box. Or, you know, if you've got a whole bunch of phone, analog phones, you can get a channel bank and plug the channel bank into the T1 through your stations so you can have, you know, 96 stations running off of one asterisk box with four channel banks. So, why aren't you talking, Ratchet? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> 
let's get into some of the protocols that Asterisk uses to, uh, to talk to the network. Those yeah. are really hard to find, in my opinion. I, I mean, I've looked for them because I thought they were really cool, but I could not find them anywhere. I mean, I searched eBay for about a week and I finally gave up in frustration. Oh, that's true. Okay, for those who didn't hear, um, that means apparently the Linksys PAP2 is the same way as the uh, Sakura 2000, and they can or can't accept firmware. It cannot be flashed to firmware. Anyway, getting back to interconnecting asterisk. Well, I feel like this. Uh, the main protocol for interconnecting voice over IP calls is called SIP. It stands for Session Initiation Protocol. And it's a session, uh, sort of a signaling protocol only. Um, it only signals and sets up calls. And what it does is it you know, contacts your box and say, hey, I have a VoIP call for you. You might want to connect to it. It's on this IP address, at which point it connects to the IP address with a protocol called RTP, which stands for, what does it stand for? Real-time transport protocol. Real-time transport protocol. Uh, the, it was developed by the IETF and not ITU. Uh, it uses URLs instead of telephone numbers. For example, it, you won't connect to uh, 311-555-2368. You'll enter it into, uh, you'll say SIP, you know, stromcarlson.com, which doesn't work. I've tried it. Uh, it's intended to be a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. And it's not like, you know, a general server. It's supposed to, like, my box connects to Strom, and, you know, it doesn't actually have to connect it. doesn't have to contact anybody for it to work. There's certain caveats to that. We'll get into those later. Uh, the main advantage of SIP is that it's very ubiquitous. It's supported by everybody. If you talk about VoIP, anything post, like, 1998, it uses SIP. Uh, you know, Packet 8, Broad Voice, you know, uh, Essentially, all the major providers use SIP, with the exception of AT&T call phases. They use another protocol, which we'll cover later. Um, does not play well with NAT. Uh, it's very hard to actually set up with NAT. You have to start poking holes in your firewall for the I, uh, RTP. And, for example, if you start, you know, connecting out to another box, say I'm behind NAT and I try to call Strom, it'll say, oh, connect to my box. I'm at 192.168.0.252, and Strom's loss will go blind. So it's, there's a lot of workarounds for it. What you have to do is you have to tell it to, you know, this is my external IP address. Use this for everything. You know, don't care about whatever your IP address is. However, it's, in my opinion, it's a bit of a kludge. Uh, the other protocol, before, before there was SIP, there was H323. It was developed in 1996 by the ITU. Uh, it's really far more signaling to uh, traditional protocols that are used by telephone networks, but not specifically, as opposed to SIP. Uh, like, for example, SS7 or something, it's more, it's more similar to that. Uh, again, it uses RTP for media transport, and it's used internally a lot by uh, internet exchange, uh, inter-exchange carriers. And it's very unpopular in the VoIP world because it, it, it is a bear to set up, and it's, it's like I said, a major pain in the ass to get working correctly. Um, hold on. Yeah. Although, by the way, although this is a telephone talk, please turn your ringers off. Thank you. Come on, I figured that's discriminatory. Uh, we actually were hanging, uh, Strom was hanging out in Ast Pound Asterisk one day on irc.freedone.net for anyone interested. And uh, Jair Zare, who's one of the major uh, contributors in Asterisk, uh, made the following quote, just don't use H323 and all your problems will be solved, which technically is correct. Now for Asterisk, there's a main protocol, and as you can tell, it's, you know, it's based on Asterisk, it's called Inter-Asterisk Exchange. It was uh, developed by Mark Spencer of Digium, the guy who wrote Asterisk, and it covers both signaling and media transport. It's a very streamlined, very simple protocol. What uh, Mark wanted to do is he wanted to, you know, he took a look, took a look at SIP, took a look at H323 and said, boy, these are crap. Let's go to the, my own protocol. Um, does not suffer from NAT traver tra traversal issues. For example, I'm behind a firewall, I call Strom, and, you know, it knows that where I'm coming from, it, you know, it knows where to connect. It doesn't actually, you know, say, hey, I have an IP address here, and which could be wrong. Um, data signaling happened via UDP on port uh, uh, 4569. That's the only thing you have to open up in your firewall as opposed to RTP, which I think you have to open about 15,000 ports for. Uh, very well supported by asterisk, duh. Uh, it's, but however, the support in terminal equipment is, where, is very rare. The only uh, ATA that supports it is the ICSI by uh, that Digium that makes it. Uh, I've also noticed that one phone recently uh, started to support it. Uh, I think it's called a NetWeb 302. You can, it's actually made in China. 
and the only place you can get it is someplace in Delaware. Any telephone? Could you shut off your ringer, please? I'm testing for later. <laughs> the nerve of some people. Uh, that's me all the way. Uh, it's a permanent protocol for many PSTM termination providers because, you know, a lot of PSTM termination providers, they use asterisk. It all works. Just set it up. It's fire and forget. I think I set up one of my accounts about a year ago. I haven't touched a configuration since. It just works. Uh, the other protocols are the uh, Media Gateway Control Protocol, MGCP. That's the other protocol I was talking about. It's used by AT&T called Vantage. I'm not sure if they still use it, but they did. I had uh, bought an old ATA from on eBay, and I had to reflash it and do all kinds of annoying things to actually get it working with Asterisk, but the support is there. Uh, the other thing is Cisco's uh, skinny, skinny Client Control Protocol. Uh, it's used by Cisco phones. This actually uses SIP. This doesn't use SCCP right now. You can reflat, you can choose with the uh, Cisco phones to use either SIP or SCCP. There are different firmware images. Um, not all Cisco phones uh, s support SIP. For example, I have an older version that was made about early 2000s, uh, and it only uses SCCP. There's support for it. It's not the best in the world, but it works. I mean, I can only have one line on the phone, and three-way calling is an issue. I try to flash over and the box crashes. There are two different SCCP implementations for Asterisk, and they both kind of suck. Uh, SCCP, uh, Chan SCCP2 doesn't suck as bad. Uh, <laughs> but Chan Skinny... Um, it's but that's kind of like being the tallest midget, so... Yeah, exactly. Uh, since Strom is the codec Nazi, we'll just sort of trade this one for him. I'm a codec Nazi now, in addition to being a spelling and grammar Nazi. Wow. It's a compliment. So anyway, um, basically, there are many different codecs that you can use to encode voice with asterisk. And we're going to go over what they are, what they do, and what they sound like. In order to understand codecs, you need to understand how digital audio works. How many of you don't really know how digital audio works? Okay. Well, we'll I can see too many hands go up, so I'll kind of go over this quickly then. Um, basically, you have an analog waveform, and this is divided up into a number of little uh, slices of time. This is called, and the, the so you have an analog bunch of different slice up, a slice up bit of uh, analog audio. These are pulses of analog amplitudes called pulse amplitude modulation. So you've got time division, but it's still analog. What happens is these values are then quantized into, um, into digital values, and this is called pulse code modulation. PCM is what you use when you talk on a telephone, on a regular telephone call, and it's also what you hear when you play a CD. So what happens is the values are quantized between 1 and negative 1. So you, depending on how much resolution you want to give to the values, you can specify uh, more. The way MuLaw works, what MuLaw is, is uh, the, the companding scheme that the analog telephone network uses. Whenever you make a regular long distance call or a regular local call, you're using MuLaw. It's 64 kilobits per second. And what happens is it's a logarithmic scale. So more resolution is given to the lower amplitudes where most of the voice frequency is in order to give you the impression of 16-bit audio. What uh, actually happens is it's only 8-bit audio, but it sounds far closer to 16 because of the, uh, because of the companding. But however, for some people, 64 kilobits a second is still way too high for bandwidth. They're greedy and they want to, you know, or they have you know, less bandwidth and they want to be able to send phone calls over less bandwidth. So there are many different ways of compressing this already compressed audio. It, uh, adaptive differential pulse code modulation, well first differential pulse code modulation uses four bits to describe the change from the last value. What MuLaw does and PCM does is it actually describes each value individually. This one it says, you know, go down four, go up two, and so on regardless of the original source resolution, regular D, uh, DPCM just uses four bits. Uh, adaptive differential PCM uses a varying number of bits spend depending on the com complexity of that sample, but it's still 32 kilobits a second, so they have to scrim somewhere. It sounds almost like MuLaw, but not quite. 
There's also LPC, and this is the basis for a lot of what you find in cell phone codecs. It's linear predictive coding, and it basically, it's pretty complex, but the, the basic uh, thing is that it uses vocoders to compress speech. And it tends to work pretty well for speech, but there's a lot of electronic music nowadays that has the vocoders that uh, have the singing synthesizer effect in the song. So, actually if you listen closely to talking on a cell phone, you'll begin to hear that. And you can actually use all these codecs with asterisk and VoIP. So, again, voice on the PSTN is 64 kilobits a second, synchronous band, but for wireline telephones. North American uses MuLaw companding. Most of the rest of the world uses ALaw companding, which is almost identical, but slightly different. But for all intents and purposes, they sound exactly the same. If you're at 64 kilobits, if you're doing something called bit robbing, which is basically to give you a supervision in band on one of the digital channels, you get 56 kilobits a second. But for the most part, it sounds the same. On mobile phones, you only get 4 to 13 kilobits a second for your voice, which is why mobile phones sound so horrible. So, speech compression does have a lot of costs. First off, if you're running it on your asterisk box, you have to transcode from MuLaw to the codec. And in order to be able to hear it, you have to transcode back from the codec to MuLa. So there's an in increased CPU load that's required. That box that does 790 simultaneous calls, if you have it do GSM or one of the you know, lower bandwidth, bandwidth codecs, I think that drops down to maybe 100 simultaneous calls. There's no guarantee that two pieces of equipment will, see, will speak the same codecs. A lot of times, like the, uh, the Sephora's speak MULA and then G.726, I think, and then some of the other codecs. But, yes. <laughs> Boy, you know, I think we're going to have to like, keep track of whether this is on or off. But the, um... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But I think the, uh, the EC only speaks MULA. And there are things that just speak certain codecs, and it's a mess. I mean, there's no guarantee that any species of equipment will be able to talk to each other unless you use MULA. Some codecs um, require licensing. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, if you're using non-standard bit rates for some of these codecs, then you're really in trouble. Some codecs require you to pay licenses to use them. There is a codec that, um, actually we'll get into that in, in another slide. And codecs don't handle all kinds of sounds well. If they're People will gen generally have trouble understanding certain words. A friend of mine says that every time he calls up a restaurant to make a reservation, they cannot understand the word north. It's always interpreted as something else from his mobile phone. No one ever gets north right. It's difficult to understand anyone who has poor diction because these are designed under the, under the assumption that people who are using them tend to enunciate well. And music on hold in Kodak land is absolute torture. You can gouge your eyes out if you really want to. I mean, I, I want to do that every time I'm on hold on my mobile phone. <laughs> it is that bad sometimes. There's one, there's one we'll demonstrate that is that bad. There, there's a documented case in Arkansas. <laughs> uh, apologies to anyone from Arkansas here. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the benefits. Each call uses less bandwidth. That's it. I wish there were more, because that side looks really empty, but that's it. Here's what Asterisk supports. G.711, which is 64 kilobit per second, MULA or a law companding. G.726, which is 32 kilobit per second, ADPCM. G.729, which is 8 kilobit per second, C CSA self, which is conjugate structure and algebraic code excited linear prediction. That requires a license from Digium to purchase. Um, we're going to demonstrate that codec later. And just, for the, just in order for me to be able to call Ratchet's box and have one telephone conversation over the codec, we each had to pay $10. And if you that's only for one call. So if you want to have more than one call using this codec, 10 bucks a call for the licenses. Not per instance. Like, yeah, simultaneous calls. So if you only buy five licenses, you, can have, you cannot have more than five simultaneous calls running on that codec. No, if it were 10 bucks a call, I think no one would use this thing. It would be like being back in um, those days. Or if it was developed by Microsoft. There's the Internet Low Bandwidth Codec, which is a 13.3 kilobit per second linear predictive coding. This is what Skype uses. 
And I mean, I've heard people rave about Skype. I hear it. I hear it just like ILBC. There's also Speaks, which is an open source codec. I think it's based on like the Og Vorbis stuff. And that's also 13.3 kilobits per second code excited linear prediction. And finally, for those of you who are like on dial up, there's LPC 10, which is 2.4 kilobits per second. It sounds more ghastly than you can possibly imagine. Yes, that's the one. So in order to uh, do a comparison of all these codecs, we figured we'd um, play some audio for you using each of the codecs. And so I decided, you know, I could do just talking, but that would get boring after about 25 seconds. So as proof that you can find anything on Craigslist, I found this song that this band let us use for free. So, so uh, apologies if it's not up to your musical standard or your musical taste, but it's free, so be happy. I like it. I like it too. It gets stuck in my head every time I hear it, and, and it's really annoying when he uses this version. Yes. <laughs> oh wait, so let me, um, let me cue it up here. If they ever get a recording contract by their album, we're, we'd have promised we'd give them a plug. Yeah, we promised. Also, if you really, really like the song, I think there's a copy on your asterisks, on, not on your asterisks, on your DEF CON CD. Also, on your DEF CON CD, there's the full copy of, the, of that song in every codec we just demonstrated, so you can listen to them and uh, compare for yourself. We won't be responsible if you listen to the whole thing in LPC 10. Yeah. So let's talk about getting Asterisk to talk to the real phone network, because this is all fun and cool, but um, it's going to be kind of limited in use if you can't talk to you know, your mobile phone or your mother or someone on the street. There are various providers that, um, that you can use to terminate to the public telephone network, and we're going to go over some of them. One of them is called New Phone. New Phone, uh, well, you don't know about no more about New Phone than I do. Why don't you tell them? <laughs> New phones is that they're they have cheap rates, not as cheap as some other voice over IP providers, uh, but pretty decent rates. Uh, they, they're very geared toward asterisk. I believe they support the SIP only after a nice public outcry, saying, you know, I want to use this with my, you know, for, uh, for some other ATA. Uh, one of the things that I like about them, and the reason why I chose them as my first provider, is they can set your caller ID outbound, which has some interesting, you know, applications to it. Uh, we'll cover that later. Um, and also, 
the really cool thing about a new phone, and I think it's the best feature, is they have insanely easy provision 800 numbers. I never thought anywhere in my life I would ever have five 800 numbers to my name, but I do. I, and you seriously, you click them, and they send you an email saying, here's your 800 number. Uh, you can actually do um, vanity 800 numbers for them, like we wanted to buy 800 Casper Rise X. I don't know how many Casper there is. I've forgotten how many 800 numbers I own. Anyway, you, you, it takes a little longer for that, and they charge you a fee, but, you know, for any old 800 number that you want, it's just, you know, poof, it's there. Uh, they're very easy going. Uh, when I first set up my account with them, I'm not sure how they do it now, but when I first set up my account with them, I said, oh, you know, okay, I'll PayPal you, you know, X amount of money. Uh, what happens when that runs out? Are you going to shop my service? He says, no, we'll just send you a reminder email, you know, uh, we'll just you know, send it off. And we won't turn off your service or anything, just, just send us some money. Uh, they also have something called call and party number for delivery. Uh, how many people are familiar with SS7 and the difference between CPN and CID? CPM is sort of like caller ID on steroids. Um, th it's a little more truthful than caller ID. It's actually nine times out of ten unless you know what you're doing. CPN is usually very uh, truthful and you can't change it. Of course, you know, my kids are up here probably laughing at it. Um, it's, it's, like, it's caller ID on steroids. It's a little more truthful and it's harder to send. Theoretically. Uh, it also has, you know, re quite recently, they have a proper call completion process. Now, for the longest time, what would happen if you know, like, you know, you're calling the doctor through or you hit an intercept saying, like, you know, the number you've been calling has been changed to so-and-so, it wouldn't actually reflect that. Uh, and for someone like me, who's a phone freak and who enjoyed calling intercepts, uh, it was a bit of a bummer. But, you know, a couple weeks ago, not necessarily, I feel like a couple months ago by now, uh, they actually turned it on and I called a, a pay phone out in Boston and I got you know, didn't accept incoming calls and I got incredibly excited when I heard the uh, Verizon voice saying, the call is done. The phone number you've reached is not accepted for the call. And I literally hung up the phone and called him and said, you fund this proper call completion? And he was jumping down like excited death. And the two girls on net. <laughs> it, it was very exciting for me. Uh, call on to dead, uh, direct infrared dial numbers, which are basically numbers you would call on, you would set up on the PSTN, so mom, dad, you know, your sister, someone who doesn't have asterisk can uh, call you and actually reach you on your work line. The only uh, numbers they have are in Michigan, which for me, I guess, is okay, because no one really calls me on voice besides him. Um, and they're also not too freak-friendly, despite being very easygoing. For example, uh, during Strom and uh, Lucky 225's presentation uh, last year, uh, in the age of voiceover IP, was it? Yeah, I think it was something like that. Uh, they sent him a cease and desist letter saying... Uh, no, they didn't send me the cease and desist letter. Who, who, who did they send the cease and desist letter? Was it... Was it not there? Yeah. Not yeah. 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 there. Stand up. Stand up. This Here's Mr. Man. Cease and Desist. This is the man who's on uh, Jeremy... <laughs> this is the uh, man who was on Jeremy McNamara's shit list for that weekend, who basically said, you know, if you do this, I will terminate your account and ban you for life from new phone. Um, I haven't heard a peep out of them. Okay, we're just going to go through. Oh, they stopped carrying CPM this week? Oh, great. Wonderful. So may maybe Jeremy Sorry is just folks, aware of this is what we did. <laughs> um, and you know, uh, like, geez, do you really think he doesn't trust us for sending CPM plus letters? I, I don't know. Asterlink, this is, this is helpful. We used to like Asterlink until this weekend. Link, for the most part, for me, has been reliable, although um, this week has been a whole other bag of forms, which we'll get into later in the talk. Uh, you can get your inbound uh, termination via toll-free numbers, and it delivers AniII. How many people do not know what AniII is? AniII is class of service, so you can tell whether your calls are coming in from a landline phone or a mobile phone or a payphone, what type of payphone see whether your calls are coming in from a prison, too. And Asterlink does also proper call completion. Uh, so if you, know, you get through the CPM session 14, the number's been changed, you can, you can actually hear that. The cons, the account management interface is a little kludgy. It, um, it's actually gotten better. I was actually able to use it with Firefox for the first time this week. But I haven't tried it in a while, so I don't know how long it's been. But it, it kind of didn't quite work right with Firefox. And right now, at least, they're experiencing geeks to each other problems with some customers, namely us. <laughs> this is why we don't like them anymore, among the other things. Yeah. But 
we'll, we'll get into our, our, our beef with Asterisk at our Asterlink later. There's also a voice call connect, which uh, I use for some of my inbound numbers. They're, they give you a local number in almost any rate center you want. You get unlimited incoming minutes on uh, inbound each calls. And you have inbound numbers in a large number of rate centers. And it's also called the problem. Oh, fuck, I just said rate centers. <laughs> the, um, the problem is it's one of the most expensive e providers for outbound termination. Um, new phone is about two cents a minute. Astrolink is also two cents a minute. Voice Pulse Connect is, I think, it used to be 2.9 cents a minute, then they dropped it down to the low, low price of 2.47 cents a minute, something like that. Wow, sign me up. <laughs> and we, I guess, you know, when your regular landline long distance is 5 cents a minute, like mine is at home, uh, this may all seem incredibly cheap. But when you've got providers that do 1.3 cents a minute, <laughs> and, uh, you get uh, crazy with the price. And the other thing is that inbound numbers with voice calls connect sometimes easy to look past custom. My number that's on my business card is the Voice Pulse Connect number, and um, the, 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 for, you know, for some reason, usually I have to go to a menu. You know, thank you for calling for strong calls. Yeah, it's pretty strong. Dial two to play our touchstone game, dial three. And um, the I, I had someone trying to call me, and they kept pressing two, and it would just hang up on them because my my TBX never heard the two. So I had to make it route directly to my mobile phone this uh, this weekend. Um, this apparently this is the first uh, this is the first time it's happened to me, but some people have been having major issues with it. So if you're really unlucky, you're totally screwed. Here's voice chat, which is really cheap. It's 1.3 cents a minute. The only pro the problem is uh, actually I think it's 1.29 now. Oh, is it? Wow, a whole mill they dropped it. <laughs> hey, it adds up. Yeah, it does. It does. Caller ID delivery is unreliable with VoiceJet. You oftentimes get the number of your outbound trunk instead of the number that you set it to. There's no incoming service that's outbound only, and there's no proper call completion. If you call a number that's been disconnected, and the phone company at the terminated again says, this number has been disconnected, all you'll hear is the phone ringing and ringing and ringing again. So you'll never know why your mother has changed her phone number in the extent she needs to. She doesn't love me! <laughs> exactly, see? All, all these other things. That's because we all use LPC 10. There's also a company called Broad Voice. They have cheap GIDs in most rate centers. Um, after your initial account, the GIDs are worth a couple bucks a month. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, they're pretty much run by phone freaks. In fact, when you sign up and if you have them send you um, the kit with the ACA and everything, they also send you this little pin, which is this logo, but it has a, a red circle and the slash through it. I, I actually found out this weekend they also do uh, t-shirts. Yes, yeah, so at least one person here at DEF CON is walking around with the Broad Voice t-shirt with the bell logo and the, and the slash through it. So if you're that person, please stand up and, and get some applause. He's not here? What the hell? They lose. You lose. We were going to give you just like, you know, 100 bucks for coming, but hello. They were going to get the payphone too. The problem with broad, uh, oh, and the other cool thing is that um, it has caller ID with name for inbound calls. Most of these other carriers will just deliver the number, but th these people will actually do a name lookup and deliver the name for you. So you will receive not just a three one one five 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 two two six eight is calling you, but that is you know Mabel Fishbeck. The problem is that it's SIP only. So if you want to do each termination, or if you're behind a firewall or something, you've got to do some sort of deep proxying if you actually want it to be reliable. They're prone to service outages. I've got, you know, my, my dial plan is up to like one plus a year, so it doesn't remember if it goes over broad voice. Because it's just not the right plan. And, um, but there, sometimes it just doesn't work. Phone support is kind of slow, although it is 24-7, so I guess if you call at, you know, 3 a.m., they will answer like that. No, they won't. Yeah, I try. But they'll have to wake up first, and then they'll, you know, drink their coffee, then they'll answer the phone. And then the other thing is, CNAM delivery is also unreliable. So, you know, caller ID name tends to work, but it doesn't work all the time. So, now let's get into building your asterisk network. Why don't you explain to me now, Ben? Exactly. Okay, Brandon. What the uh, first what is to uh, actually translate phone numbers over to uh, uh, URLs in the SIP, uh, which based on DNS uh, allows any number to be queried. Uh, and what it is is if it exists, you can uh, bypass the public switch 
telephone network saving money. So for example, with, you know, I know that 3115 is a voice number. I'll check with that rather than just my land box. Uh, what's designed by the ICU uh, is, 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 is supposed to be used by telephone companies. However, there's a uh, program out there, uh, I think it's the largest one, I may be wrong, it's called uh, T164.org. Uh, it's a free do-it-yourself solution. What you do is you uh, register your number on the 3115 page and you register it to a URL. And then when someone queries their email server, you, you know, get the URL back and they connect to you rather than over the internet, rather than the land line. Uh, it has over 350,000 numbers registered, which sounds like a lot, but uh, then you realize that a local exchange that makes it like 3155 only has 10,000 numbers. And how many exchanges do you have next to you? I think in an area code, there's a maximum limit of all the reserves previous to something like 7.2 million numbers. And Los Angeles has how many area codes now? So. A lot. Uh, they also have 78 million special PSTM services, which are essentially uh, someone decided to offer free termination of 800 numbers, which is handy. Um, it, it basically, if you, wanted to, if you don't want to actually use uh, a PSTM termination service, you can use this and you can dial 800 numbers because they're free. Okay, if we all pay attention to the top, basically I'm at the top telephone and I want to dial 3115552368. Oh, look at that. Touchpads, marvels of modern technology. Yeah, the greatest thing in video games. Uh, where I'm, I'm at the telephone, basically I want to dial 3115552368. So I pick up my handset, dial it, and it talks to my GPS. It says, okay, I want to dial 3115552368. Connect me there somehow. So what I set up my GPS to do is talk to me on the server. And it says, hey, do you know what 3115552368 is? And it either says, you know, yes or no. And essentially in this example, it says yes. It's Bell at telephone.com. So it registers that to my DBX, at which point my DBX goes, uh, you know, ooh, I guess I'll go over the internet for that one rather than picking up a local line. And it goes over the internet and it dials 3115552368 down here, which is also Bell at telephone.com. They're also completely bypassing the PSTN. Uh, Enum is a very, uh, has a lot of problems in my opinion. It's a very top-down way of looking at things. It's uh, centrally managed, centrally served, and centrally centralized. Basically, it's, uh, they want to develop it exactly like DNS and have, you know, 15 root servers all over the world, which is great, but no one actually has done it yet. So, except for like 164. And it's not being used by any PSTN providers, as far as we know. Uh, someone want to tell, tell me otherwise? That, yeah. Uh, on the last April, what someone came out with, um, designed, by digital, designed by the digital precision assembly, which stands for uh, distributed universal number assembly, and it's basically a uh, time by digital precision, therefore it's actually good. I mean, it's not a disaster, right? Uh, it's a fully peer-to-peer -peer E-164 solution. Basically, you know, I don't care if the server, I'll query the two nodes next to me, and they share the two nodes next to them, etc., etc., etc. And it allows you to uh, easily set up your own telephone network with friends. does only have one node, and it knows it's coming from here, so therefore it won't send that query over to this node. Um, what it does is it reaches that node, and that node talks to all this one, and eventually it goes over, goes over, goes over, and it reaches the PBS who knows how to dial 256-555-1234, at which point it follows the trail back and says, hey, 256-555-1234 is, you know, poor well run service at Alabama, and that's going to start in Alabama. Uh, this is all a, this is actually quite a cool. It's a very interesting peer-to-peer -peer setup. It's a lot like Nutella, which 
essentially what I could start doing is I could start advertising, hey, all the numbers for the White House, send them to me. So I could, you know, talk about how you start World War III when I take over Kremlin. Um, scalability is a bit of an issue. It, we're not sure how it's going to take off yet. It's still relatively small, but I just, uh, someone brought up to me, well, it's going to evolve like Nutella. Look how many problems we had with that. It's not officially a standard yet. We submit it to um, IETF, but as we all know, standards cost money, and these people don't have it. Uh, right now, it's only officially in the CDS head version of that, where it's the text, and you can submit to a real version. And you can that. Uh, you can, I believe it's attached to the actual submit and run it against 109 or 107 or whatever it is, and get done with support in it. And my opinion, it will work fine. Um, also, in my opinion, I think the I was really Quality is very essential. Okay, who knows all about that? on TV in the hotel, don't change the channel, we brought a special thing coming up for you. Asterisk Gateway Interface. Okay. Do you want to talk about this one? Can you tell that we're only uh, experts on certain subjects? Yeah, tag team, exactly. It's not in your Dundee notebook? Uh, I don't know what the phone number is. Oh, great. This is what apparently Alexis Park saw fit not to replace our DSL modem after it was broken. So, uh, basically, a lot of my presentation of this part of this are kind of broken. Um, uh, starting from here, basically what it is is you start on a standard endpoint, and it's a standard in, a standard out. And basically what asterisk is, is all kinds of different ways. And it, what it does is it reads all the variables in, and Yeah. 
file, you know, API caller, your caller ID is which comes back to me as your caller ID is. Then it says, okay, I'm done. What do you want me to do? It says, okay, same digits, uh, 311555. Same digits is what we want. These live commands don't ask for center commands. And it goes, you know, so 311. Then it says, 200 result zero. Okay, I'm done. And at which point it says, hang up. I'm done. Leave me alone. Disconnects me, sends back, you know, 200 result zero. I'm done now. It hangs up. Yes, exactly what it is. Which caller ID read that? Enact. Um, now, that's a lot of work to do in a twenty line script. And there's someone who came out uh, called Asterisk API, which is a curl module for Asterisk and writing API scripts. Uh, it simplifies a lot of API programs. Essentially, it takes out a lot of the dirty work, and I think someone said once well, doing the work that you don't have to. Uh, allows the API to you know, be a, a simple object interface and curl. Uh, the problem is that that are old and very not well maintained. I subscribed to the mailing list I'll say about six months ago, and it's been dead silent up until about two months ago when someone said, is this mailing list still active? At which point everyone came out of the woodwork. And I think it's died down now, but you know, maybe I should turn that another thing, or maybe a few people should sign up to it and um, start using it yourselves. Um, what it is, is it allows API to easily integrate with curl, which easily integrates with uh, almost anything in the known universe. And it's uh, available at asterisk.newinter.net. I actually thought the new issue was a very strange German word for like a long time ago. I said, oh, okay. Here's the same program. As you can tell, it's a lot easier. I think we condensed it down at least 100% to about 10 lines or so. But it says, you know, use Asterisk API, use this module. It reads in, you know, starts up a new, starts up a new uh, object called API. And what it is, is just, you know, that entire, you know, 20 line, tw like 10 line thing where it's like checking variables, make sure they're okay. It does it all automatically. It's amazing. I've never done that. And the other feature that the uh, other one didn't have is it, you did not check whether or not the person had a caller ID in the first place. So you basically, if you didn't have a caller ID, you would get a file file saying, your caller ID is, and then it would hang up. Or what this one does is it checks to see if the caller ID is there, at which point it says something. So, you know, what this would do is you didn't have a caller ID, it would just you know, flat out hang up on you. And that's okay. It's, wow, that was easier. Uh, there's lots of ways to interact with your script. Um, one of the useful things is a touch tone. Basic, ubiquitous, everyone knows how to use it, including your mom. Uh, however, you know, it's very limited on what you can do with it. For example, you have to basically just assign a function to each scene, or, you know, you can only basically transcribe numbers. Uh, I'm the only person that ever taught that to me. Um, VXML is uh, extensible. Uh, what, you basically, what VXML is essentially voice XML is it's basically a, a XML DB that allows for scripting with uh, voice interaction. Sensible, however, the problem with Asterisk is that it has no native support. Maybe you guys need that. I really want to say it, but there is a um, relatively new uh, open source program called SynXDBS, which says it has VXML uh, capabilities. Maybe it's just they can integrate with Asterisk. However, I spent about two weeks trying to get this file actually ready so that you know, I eventually just gave up in frustration. There's also um, the most commercial objects. For example, Microsoft has a VXML program. I have a question yet. I will one day, sure. Uh, however, there's like at least two or three uh, commercial ones that I know of that are available just for you know, a pretty penny. So still, you know, VXML is still you know, the in use to developer objects. But you need to get a huge file to get it to get done. Uh, interacting with your script output is text to speech. There are two main versions. There are two main programs. Think, think back to that text to speech program you played within like 
the the resulting sound file, I think every fifth or tenth word or something goes, please register me. Yeah, and it, it is free for download, like you said, and you can make sure if you ever have like you know want to just don't want to make sure that it works with your program, you can set it up, and you know you just have to deal with that. Please register me every ten words or something. Uh, the other thing for output is recordings. You can do it yourself. It's free. Uh, the other person is Allison Smith, who she's the, uh, kind of the official support for Asterisk. Uh, it's for pay, and it has lot. She has lots of damn sayings available on the internet. Asterisk also comes with a whole ton of sayings. You know, she says all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah, it, it's kind of disturbing some of the things she will say for pay. Uh, <laughs> yes, you are thinking what you are thinking, and you're probably right. I a friend of mine actually just wanted to test her, and so he he sent her increasingly offensive scripts, and I think he finally found her limit after, yeah, a long time. <laughs> well, maybe she'll read Richard Nixon's social security number, I don't know. Uh, we also have friends who, uh, told the voice who wanted her to do the intro. Doug, are you here? Okay. Um, and basically, we have a sound file for saying, I really want to show you, but... Hey, well, I thought you set that up. I'm not a weather pattern. My name is Strom. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I'll, I'll show you my phone voice in a second. Calling DEFCON by phone. Script kitty tested. Blamer approved. To hear what's coming up in the next hour, press 1. To search for an event, press 2. To leave feedback to the DEFCON by phone team, press 0. And so on. If, uh, if any of you want to write down silly things on slips of paper and uh, send them, leave them up here, I'll read them for you. He has less morals than Allison Smith. Here's a slightly more complex trick. This actually uses uh, input and output. Basically, what it is is I've done these uh, three ways of doing it. And what it is is, you know, you can use uh, an API. And basically, what I say is forever, uh, it waits for you to enter a file. Waits for you to enter, wait, waits for you to enter a digit. At which point it says, you know, please enter a digit. And just keep on repeating and repeating and repeating. Uh, and what it says is after you enter a digit, it waits for uh, five seconds. And if you enter one, it says, you know, it has my voice on it. Uh, if you enter two, it has Seth's voice on it. If you enter three, it has Alice's voice on it. This was really cool. I'm terribly sorry. Intermission. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, some cool swag to give away. Digium has seen fit to give us two gobs of stuff. Apparently, Strom has become very friendly with Mark Spencer, and he sent us, um... Very friendly. Uh, so, Digium sent us a whole box of really cool stuff. There's these little CDs with asterisk on them, and they're in the shape of an asterisk. stickers. Whoa. Yes, if, if, there, if you put the sticker on your car, more people will want you. I also have FinRef stickers and OldSchoolFreak.com stickers. Two, two very kick-ass sites, in my opinion. You can see them on the different forums almost every day. Kind of a boring talk. That's where we hang out. Asterisk t-shirts. You should go to people who... So, I need four volunteers who want to come up here and dial phones. Actually, no, let, let's have them answer questions. Okay. 
Name a pre-divestiture Bell operating company. Pre-divestiture, not 9X. Pre-divestiture? Pre-divestiture. Operating company. GTE was not a Bell company. Okay, how about this? I'm taking over now. Name a post-divester 9X regional bell operating company. For example, someone already said it. Raise your hands, people. You. Come up. You in the back. Yes, come on up. You. Yes, come on up. Dennis. Sure, why not? You're my friend. Right. Come on up. So, let me mind this thing out the way. of you sit in front of a telephone. So, let me prop up this list in front of you here. This is a touchstone speed dialing contest, and for some of you who were uh, in, the, in the game area earlier, we kind of did this just to work the bugs out of it. So, basically, I have a list of numbers here that I programmed into my PBX, and the person who dials these numbers the fastest and most accurately will bring my desk phone here and get a prize. So, let me set this list up here. Yeah, I'll explain the rules in just a second. Unfortunately, these don't do pulse dialing, otherwise it would be a, it would do a switch hook tapping competition. Can you all read that? Beg pardon? Sir, can you read that? Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to pick up a phone. Each phone is dial 1 plus the area code plus the number. After one second, if you dial correctly, you'll hear another dial tone, dial the next number, and so on and so on. If you misdial a digit, say you dial two instead of one, you'll get a reorder tone after one second, at which point you will want to dial the number again. If you skip a digit, you'll hear nothing after one second. You may want to press a couple digits until you get a reorder. If you get a reorder that um, you can't break by dialing, if you get the reorder where you can redial the number, There's rules, there's rules. If you get the reorder that does not go away when you start dialing digits, you screwed up and you have to hang up and start at the beginning again. So, ready, set, go. Pardon? Yeah, we're part of he wins. The guy in the quest shirt. What size t-shirt do you wear, sir? What size t-shirt do you wear? Large? Okay. to leave. We need one more contestant. Not the guy in the bell shirt. You want to switch phones, Natus? Okay. Yeah. We, we like to preferential treatment. <laughs> so, do you understand the rules, sir? Okay. On your mark. Don't touch the handset. Uh, don't pick up the handset, boys. Go. You can touch the handset. One plus the area code plus the number. Yes. On your mark. Get set. Dial. Good news, everyone. I found the numbers. 
Give me the depths of an extension jack knob. You know, Natus, you're really starting to make me sad that I know you. Put his own call on hold. That's, that's what it hey! Yeah, let's do some bin rev and also three seekers too. Um, yeah. One of you still got a call on hold. What size t-shirt do you wear? XL. No, I actually thought it was pretty tough. Let's do this. Let me uh, plug the telephone in so we can hear the, the winner. What a cool idea. Yes. I think we'll do one more and then we have to get on with the presentation. Um, let's let's make this fair. Let's make this fair. Let's clear this out and have four all new people. You, uh, if you, you guys who competed, come up to me after the show. You'll have, you'll get swag. You'll get swag. You'll get swag. You're welcome. Okay, new rule: don't flash so fast that you put a call on hold. Just yes. A word of wow, okay. Actually gave him the money. Good for you. Sweet. Let's get that guy in the gray hat around. For future reference, all new money should just be coming straight to us. There we go. Okay, so, um, let's get some volunteers. How about this guy? Okay, uh, yeah. here about a question. Um, what, what is required? No, you're, you're okay. You already pulled up. <laughs> you made some funny comments. What is required for Dundee to be in a release version of Asterisk? I heard a patch. Was that? Yeah. Yep. Come, right, up. come on up. Um, what sounds more ghastly than you can possibly imagine in Codec Y2? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, we have um, one more. Uh, oh, come on up. Yeah. Here's your cue. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was my line, Ratchet. Do you guys understand the rules from last time, or do I need to repeat them? Okay, yes. Okay, um, and now you're able to hear the caller. So, uh, on your mark, get set, dial. Oh, we should play the touch tone music if it wouldn't screw up the uh, touch tone thing. Well, your iPod is also next to you. Yes. A princess rotary? <laughs> it's, it's little, it's lovely, but however, it does not light because it's a uh, consumer sale model. Yeah, made up for support rotary. Digi and Zaptel cards do support rotary phones. In fact, you can navigate IVR menus with rotary phones with a Zaptel card. However, the only thing that does support rotary dial are the card and the XC. I think the XC supports the uh, supports rotary dialing, I'm not sure. That does. It does? Okay, cool. So, yeah, this thing, this thing does support it. 
unfortunately, no. This one actually belongs to Mark Spencer, and I have to give it back to him. We were thinking about just auctioning it off, but it's not enough. But anyway, I found my two uh, complex, my slightly more complex script in my caller ID script. So here we go. This is the caller ID one. <laughs> Initial address message. made by Automatic Electric Group, which was GTE's manufacturing company, and which it, but it's now been discontinued as far as I know. It has been. Oh, and yeah. ironically, Automatic Electric is now part of this. But anyway, you only find GTE 5s typically in uh, former GTE territory and some independent
let's get into the technical details of this later because okay, uh, we might be running out of time. Um, social engineering, which says, hey, you know, caller ID is always a nice thing, right? I guess so. Uh, since caller ID is used to it, one was played by Vicky Four, who is on GoodSecurity.net, and uh, not sure you did a lot of work with her. Here you can at the end. You can also. You can also have her do color ID spoofing most of the time with uh, two lines in your extensions.com file and asterisk. Yes, so. you can just press and make a port run. Um, you know, they're not here, they're not going to buy So I have, I have color ID spoofing to set up. But one of the skips are kind of running for our time, yeah. It works really Basically, okay. Um, that's spoofing? What back spoofing is, it's, it's a, <laughs> you can talk kind of jump ahead. It allows you to, if you're doing scanning, you can prioritize you know, the more interesting phone numbers. Uh, here are some real caller ID names. Uh, things we got. Fun things, money, Verizon information, CIA, and booze. It's a really, really cheap reverse lookup. And you can maybe figure out some of yourself on it. Why are you so obsessed with these people? I'm straight. I love you too, Daniel. Here's an example of me back spoofing. Thanks to the ticket master. I need your credit card because uh, this time it didn't work and go through. Can you give it to us, please? Super caller ID is something that I hacked up in about 25 minutes. It extrapolates tons of useless info from a telephone number. Uh, it gives a name and address from whitepages.com and it does switch information on things from the Telcordia local exchange we designed. In my office, it runs on its own dedicated device one fifty terminal, but if you've got some screen or some window you want to run it in, you can do that too. Um, there's a version of that NATA's site, oldschoolfreak.com, and it doesn't use the word that describes the data to the web. Here's a photo of me using super caller ID spoofing from the Gladstones for Fish Restaurant at Pacific Palisades to my own phone number. See, yes. for anybody with phone freaks. Yes, I'm sure most happy you have no clue what this stuff is. With what? Um, no, it does not. not. Entirely. But it, it comes close. Local, local number portability is a whole number of other things. Our provider for DEFCON by phone claimed that we can have a, up, um, probably over 600 calls going up simultaneously.
American Idol or some, if, if you watch TV, I don't watch TV anymore, uh, one of those things. Um, my, my fiance, uh, she likes American Idol. Um, and, you know, I said, well, geez, what happens if I put your voting nine for the worst guy that was ever this thing? If you do that and they get a record contract, radio will get about 1.1% worse. Um, so I put their voting line. They're 800 numbers, so it'll be free to me. However, I think I have uh, my voting for be very difficult to me. I know, I can uh, hopefully tip the scale some favor. I, you know, the unfortunate with American Idol is it's, you know, still really just on voting with people who have no advice. But I call this. So, I mean, you know, you could possibly do this on a more uh, local level. For example, one of your news stations like, what do you think about this issue? Oh, our voting line. Uh, another interesting thing is a telephone denial of service. What happens if you have one of the foul lines? What's your NMAP by phone number? Let's just do this. Oh, here it is. Uh, on, on your exchange, right? Under the IP address you wish to scan. You know how to push my button. Please wait. Oh, this Host found with 17 ports open. Echo on port 7. Decide on port 9. Daytime on port 13. Trust on port 17. Coded on port 19. SMTP on port 25. <laughs> Main server on port 43. Domain on port 52. HTTP on port 80. And it yeah. Anyway, we go through all this of 17 ports. You get the idea. Um, if you listen to BinRev Radio on uh, radio.binrev.com, I actually did a demonstration of this about three, four weeks ago. Episode 100, you can listen to it. Uh, listen to this simple script that allows you to post change your phone. You can scan a computer for any pay phone in the world. Refresh your friend, phone Microsoft.com while driving to work. And it really, it's almost entirely useless to send those bullets back here by you know, pressing your friend. your own personal assistant. You can read your email over the back of the phone. Uh, you can't get paid with GPS. It's not a tool as wildfire when you use it. There's a lot of things. I don't think wildfires do that anymore. I just found that out there in the information. I was very sad. Uh, insanely cheaper. And DXML is safe to control the AI tool. Anyway, you can do this. I'm going to have the script up on my website. or on oldschoolfreak.com sometime this week. Uh, part 2. Next time by phone. How many of you are using DEFCON by phone? Wow, what the hell is wrong with the rest of you? Yes, why haven't the rest of you? But no, I'm surprised we actually can use it. Do you guys think it sucks as much as we think it sucks? Do you guys really like it? We'll talk about that later. Sweet, okay, cool. Dude, we've had like major headaches because of this. This is not perfect. But I missed all the shows on Friday to fixing bugs and dealing with things like this. What is, you know, last year I came up with this. There's this massive DEF CON schedule. First off, you can't memorize the same thing. You know, secondly, the times and locations change. And you can, you know, if you lose your paper schedule or you don't have a hand, you don't remember off the top of your head with every station Friday, Saturday, 2 or 4 p.m. Or you can didn't realize later on, shoot, I missed this presentation. And of course, the official print schedule, as you know, is like already out of date three weeks before the convention. So, um, and besides, 
told him he thought of all the phrases except for like one or two. Yeah. After recording everything, I got really crazy and recorded a whole bunch of crazy introductory phrases to it. You know, okay, so if you could just leave, you already how really weird it is to receive phone calls from recordings of yourself. It still freaks me out. So there's a search available in our calls. There's a reminder, and again, if you register, you can use more Facebook and you can call you back. How does it work? There's a MySQL database on this asterisk group server we have in Polo, and there's a whole bunch of audio clips. And pretty much, I spent a week in front of my computer dictating the entire text of the schedule into the system. And let me tell you, my jaw was about ready to fall off at the end of the week. But, and it's, I'll get into that much. But pretty much, there's an API script in there to do registration, searching and reminders, and it checks every 10 seconds to see if there's a call that's supposed to go out and send those calls out, and it's submitted only by, by, by our provider. And there's a web interface internally that controls the addition of events and changing the time of the presentation and so on. Okay. Um, can we do a demo? Can we do a quick thing? Quick demo. <laughs> <laughs> to hear a listing of shows that are coming up in the next hour, press 1. We're going to search for, to search for an event, press 2. To, log to search for a show by title, press 1. To search by presentation, please enter up to the first five letters of the title of the show you'd like to see, followed by the pound sign. Presentation ID 56. Be your own telephone company with asterisk. Presented by Tom Carlson and Black Ratchet. In Parthenon 3 and 4. Starting at Saturday, July 30th, 2005, at 7 o'clock p.m. Running for 110 minutes. To hear more about this event, press 1. You're all to here, you the know next about event, press two. If you hear more about the event, it reads you back the entire description of the talk as printed in the schedule. <laughs> Shouts to Strom. If any of you want to hire me for your voiceovers, please come see me. I'll leave you my contact information. But don't give them 48 pages of show descriptions, please. The first day I do. I don't think I can handle that on these pages. What I just did is free because it was cheaper than buying that damn Tepco license. The problem? Dictating the whole schedule was a pain in the ass. I didn't realize how long it would take to dictate the whole thing in. And we were, like, literally rushing. I think most of these were recorded, like, less than a week ago. And our each two determination provider just had to start having, like, two cheap jitter issues last week. Um, there were so many problems. We couldn't nail up all calls at the same time. And we had jitter problems. We had to switch to SIP. And it's really difficult to keep our schedule in sync with DEF CON schedule. We went, we asked them, please, for the love of God, give us all your schedule updates so we can inform our users and everyone who calls in about the changes. I gave you my phone number, I gave you my email address, and I have a week out of them the entire convention. So thank you, everyone, who and also, they said, we came up to them and said, hey, our schedule really sucks now because you guys have changed everything. Is there some place we can go to get updates? And they said, oh, go to updates.defcon.org. So I was like, okay, I'll, you know, sit down, fix everything. Not a single schedule change on that. I was, ugh. It, it's, it's caused me nightmares. I'm going to have nightmares for years about this. We spent all of Monday, or all of Friday, trying to deal with the fact that they pushed the entire track to be back an hour. But we, had, we hadn't anticipated that. I'm sorry? <laughs> what we should do next year is we're probably going to set up something where the schedule is actually thrown together in our system. And so that's the idea I had. The schedule is thrown together in our system so we automatically know about it and have everything centralized. And as a disclaimer, we all love Jeff Con without trying to piss anyone off. But you know, this, this is what happens. When we're going to keep calling reminders, there's no way to detect whether users are, um, are, are whether we get their voicemail. So if they don't pick up the phone, they don't get the reminder. Some of these are brain deficient and forget their pen. And I think you got a call from somebody. Please, I don't my pen. You know who you are. Freakjacker.com will be back next year, and next year we guarantee you it will be more accurate. Yes, the problem, the problem with Crack 2 is that, you know, they said, oh, move everything up an hour. Okay, that's fine. I, I updated the schedule. And they said, okay, let's go make up time during the day so everything hopefully is on schedule by the end. I cried when I found that out. I there was no way to do that. I want to 
to get into Q&A because I'm sure there are a lot of you who have Q&A. So pretty much, the CDM cards kind of flake out. There are problems because Asterisk is, uh, is GPL, but all versions of the Asterisk is owned by Digium. Um, Digium has commercial versions too. There are termination issues and there are proper call profession. Most providers don't have anywhere near 95 nines of reliability. Some providers lose their registration. There are bugs in the protocol implementations like we have just found by phone. And finally, Q&A. So, there's, no, if you want to ask a question, there is a telephone there. Queue up in front of the telephone. And for those of you watching on TV, call the following number, area code 213-415-1047, and you will be in the Q&A queue. Do not call this number if you are sitting here in the room. If you see someone who is on their phone and calling the number and holding and asking a question, grab their phone and throw it to me, and we won't give it back to them. Will you please pick up and dial 8110? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, shoot. No, sorry. I, I know what that's Please hang up that phone. Everyone calm down, we're trying to get as many questions as possible. The codex that was demonstrated earlier using a rock and roll song with a lot of bass and uh, a yelling guy and a very wide frequency bandwidth. Uh, the bandwidth frequency, the frequency, the bandwidth frequency of that music, like, aren't those codecs optimized for speech only? Not They're like optimized for speech, but the way I see it, if you, um, if you torture test the codec, you see what they really sound like under all circumstances. Because as a, you know, even all, not all speech is perfect. So if you torture test the codec, you get um, you, you get a clearer picture of what it really sounds like. You say this is like playing a, a song like that for a good test. Yeah, it's a good test. I know it's not designed for music, but there is music on hold. So um, what happens when you're driving in your car and you have tons of background noise? You're trying to use one of these. Same thing. Okay. I think that's a good point. Like if I'm taking your picture. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's see if anyone's calling in from the TV. Pete is logged in. Hello? Hello? Flight call! Let's hang up and get the next person in line. Pete is logged in. about the same as a phone company between three and five telephone sets. Run, Forrest, run! Isn't the scavenger hunt over yet? No. <laughs> There's a giant bee problem at DEF CON this year. Thank you. Yeah. 
No, they're not the only one supported. I don't know which one it is. I think it's something called Voicetel that uses the same hardware. It was the same older version of it. It's supported, it works, but uh, good luck getting it working. Uh, so are those PCI cards? Uh, yes, they're PCI, and I believe there's also one that's ISA for you really people. But you're running on it? Okay. I'm sorry about your laptop now, right? Yes. This is actually on the desktop by phone server, but we're going to move on to the next question. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get the next question right. from the real person. Hello. Hello, party. Hey, uh, could you address for a second the uh, issues of security in terms of asterisk as it has as it compares with regular phones? Ah, please. Yes, for the most part, asterisk is, uh, is about as secure as a regular telephone, although the new version of the EAST protocol now does encryption. I haven't played with it yet. It's only about two weeks old. But there is now encryption built into the CBS head version of EAST protocol. Cool. Thanks. Let's take a call from... Uh Agent logged in. Another fun thing about the payphones out in the lobby is that they do not permit transmit a payphone code, so therefore you can actually use DEF CON by phone from them. All payphones are banned because we don't feel like being charged a fee. However, thanks to Goldatel, whoever supports them, they have a very un incorrect standard on their payphones and they transmit them to Blondie. real payphones. Hello, caller. Dude, look at the phone! Grab his phone. Oh, go for it. Oh, no. I'm 
I've got this really, really nice fuck set. Have you played with uh, any of the 802 voice over there? I haven't played with any of the 802 uh, voice phones. There are phones that'll act like cordless phones, except they'll talk to your uh, Wi-Fi network. See, I, I wasn't kidding when I told you I had a really nice fuck set. 7920. Okay, so let's go 7920. Uh, if you go to the voice-info.org wiki, they have information on all of this cool stuff. I haven't played with the uh, Wi-Fi phone, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do voice software on PDS too. Yes, I, I set them up for my own thing. I have a nice Bluetooth headset. My Wi-Fi hotspot it comes right in. And we've got to go wrap this up. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I'm going to send out shouts to uh, binrev.com. You can find Strom and I there on forums up binrev.com. Um, anything else? Oldschoolfreak.com. We have yeah. stickers that we can give people. Just follow us out. We'll uh, talk your questions and do whatever. Hang on a second. You can also, before you go, um, if you have any questions and you can't get to us directly, my telephone number is on my website, so uh, call me up there. Further reading of resources on the on the slideshow on your CD. Thank you for coming, everybody.